Hello everyone, welcome to today's session on infusing trusted AI using machine learning payload logging on Kubernetes. My name is Tommy, I'm an open source developer in IBM, mostly working on um, Kubeflow and uh, machine learning infrastructure. And we also have uh, my colleague, Andrew. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Butler. Uh, I also work at IBM on open source and uh, most of my work is about integrating trusted AI on KF server. Great, thanks Andrew. Um, so now we want to go over like some of the background of why we need uh, like machine uh, model serving. Um, so to do production model serving, uh, it have a very difficult process. So first of all, um, we will have like uh, data science to like train the model first. Um, before training the model, they also have to like uh, filter out the data set. And once they train the model, they have to figure out how they want to deploy the model and scale it on top of cloud. And this whole process is uh, very complicated and it's really difficult to scale. So that's why we want to like create an open source solution to help uh, all the data scientists to just bring their models and um, scale it on top of Kubernetes. And this is where we uh, start with the project KF Serving. So KF Serving is founded by uh, Google, Seldom, IBM, uh, Bloomberg, and Microsoft. And currently it's part of the Kubernetes projects and uh, focus on 80% of the use case for uh, single model rollout and updates. And the goal for uh, Kev serving is to have a serverless ML inferencing, uh, canary rollout, and uh, model explanation. And optionally, uh, we can also help like, data scientists to do like pre- and post-processing uh, put in the uh, predictions. And this is the high-level uh, um, description for Kev serving. So Kev serving by default um, supports like pre-processing, predict, post-processing, and explain. Uh, it has a set of default framework you could use, such as TensorFlow, uh, PyTorch, uh, Scikit-Learn, XGBoost, Onyx, um, TensorRT, et cetera. And this is built on top of uh, uh, Knative and Istio. Um, so I will go over like, uh, some of the background on uh, Knative. And Knative is uh, one of the projects that used to um, serverless um, to serve the model. And IBM is the second uh, largest contributor on top of Knative. And um, KF Server used Knative to like um, build up several major functions um, such as serverless uh, serving models. And also um, getting like metrics to auto scale based on um, GPUs and TPUs. And then the other project is Istio. Um, Istio is um, used in conjunction with uh, Knative to help us like connect the models into an uh, ingress, uh, observe the models based on a set of metrics, uh, and able to like logging and tracing as well. And in addition, it could also provide a secure connection. So um, you want to like secure your models um, using like, a token and secret, you could use that um, by enabling Istio. And we also have like policy uh, from Istio to like help us um, ship the traffic from the models um, to uh, different route as well. And now we want to showcase how our uh, KF serving is working um, using the default and canon configuration. configuration. Um, so by default, when you uh, create a models on KF serving, um, you will have to create what we call an inference service. An um, inference service is help be, us like, manage the life cycle of the models. And uh, behind the hood, uh, when uh, the inference service is created, KF serving actually um, create a configuration for um, the model using Knative. And that configuration will contain multiple revisions, that is the version of your models, and uh, also create a, a route to point every uh, version of the models um, to the um, uh, generator Knative route um, for user to like use and um, keep the predictions. And currently in KF serving, uh, we have a set of default uh, components and storage system. Um, and the default models or framework we support is uh, the what's three of them are like uh, TensorFlow, um, NVIDIA, uh, Tristis, um, PyTorch, HDBoost, Scikit-Learn, Onyx, and more. Um, and when you create a model, there's like several components you could create, a genetic uh, predictor to just predict your models. And we have a concept called explainer where uh, you could add additional 
explanation um, when you create a prediction. And also transformer is for helping you to pre-process and pro-process your request before um, you send in the um, user request to the predictor. And for storing your models, uh, Chaos Serving Service currently supports like the S3, um, GCS, Azure Props, um, Persistent Volume Claim, and Genetic uh, URI like HTTP. And the inference control plane, uh, when it uh, gets very um, advanced, you could actually uh, have multiple endpoints. In this case, you could see um, when the user try to uh, call an endpoints either for prediction and explanation, I actually go into a ingress gateway where behind the scenes, when you have like um, canary traffic control, it actually routes to two different um, candidate services. And when it uh, routes to one of the candidate services, behind the scenes, the candidate services is backed by multiple um, parts that handles different uh, functionalities. For example, uh, when you want to do like uh, pre-processing and post-processing, there will be a transformer part to help you uh, process your request. And then we direct that request to either the explainer or predictor based on the user um, um, endpoints. And when it comes to explainer, uh, the explainer will use the uh, predictor part to get the information to explain the uh, transaction of uh, the uh, user request. And if, if it is directly calling the predictor, then it will just go directly to the predictor and get the model uh, result back and return back to the user. And uh, from a deployment point of view, uh, when you deploy a KF serving, um, the um, traffic routing is getting very complex. So we kind of like digest it uh, a little bit how it works uh, in conjunction with Istio and uh, Kinetic. So when the traffic comes in, it actually comes to a Istio ingress gateway first. And then uh, that will actually trigger like the Kinetic activator to reroute that traffic um, to an Istio uh, sidecar. And at that sidecar, um, we actually uh, forward the request to the user container where you contain the model and do the prediction. And when the prediction is uh, complete, then that request is actually returned back to the uh, user in this case. And uh, we also have like the source initializer that is used for when you're creating a new um, predictor explainer. Uh, that will help you to pull the model locally so you don't have to um, uh, download the model um, reload it every time um, you try to do a prediction. And to create a KIPS um, serving model is very simple. Uh, simply just create this uh, basic CRD to um, define the API versions of uh, the kindness inference service and give a name for your model. And under the spec, you can have uh, different uh, model specs. Uh, in this case, like uh, second learn TensorFlow and PyTorch. And then you just have a, a model URI to point to um, your model endpoint on uh, object storage, HTTPS, um, or a persistent volume claims. And behind the scenes, KF Serving will help you like deploy the models that have the endpoints set up already. So now we go over like, how we could uh, do the model serving on Kubernetes. Um, so we have a very a good uh, story on model serving. So how can we make the uh, model serving models um, to be trusted. And because uh, the nature of like models, um, it would always um, change based on data. So we always need to make sure like the, is the model like not vulnerable to like adversary with attack. And can we like explain what the model prediction is uh, on every transaction. And we want to make sure like is the model putting any outliner over a certain amount of time. And is there like any like concept drift within um, the current set of uh, the model prediction? So with this, uh, we introduced like the idea of explainer, and in addition, we also introduced the concept of uh, metrics logging to do like more advanced offline uh, prediction uh, and explanation. So um, on a high level, we when you want to do an like, online explanation, you could have an explainer to do like a real time. Um, processing and give you give back the user the uh, explanation of each transaction. However, like for more advanced use cases such as our online detections, uh, adversarial detection, and concept drift, we need to do like offline explanation where we need to collect data over a certain amount of time and use that 
um, transaction data to like give more advanced um, explanation on like, how the prediction is being um, done and is that uh, done correctly or not um, in a trusted way. And how it works is like uh, for every request that comes into the uh, Kubeflow server, um, the logger we have a logger agent that actually is, uh, forward the request to a uh, in this case is the candidate brokers, and the trigger of the uh, candidate broker will um, see that and then forward that to uh, whatever services we have to uh, generate metrics on uh, either like online detections, and if it like cross the threshold that we have defined, then we send an uh, alerting message to the user. And um, for the payroll logging, it actually works on uh, all the um, inference servers um, parts. Um, in this, uh, we actually no, uh, no, not only could get the um, request and response from uh, the predictor, we also could get uh, request and response from every transaction from the explainer and transformer as well. And uh, each of those like uh, payload are done with a um, cloud event v1. And you could specify the URL to like send the event to uh, whatever platform you want, uh, not just limited to Knative. And to specify a payload logging, um, it's very simple on the inference service. You simply under your um, predictor explainer or transformer, uh, just put a section for the uh, logger specs. And under that, you could say, uh, in this case, we want to send all the requests and response, so we set them all off, but you could also could like, limit to just requests and response. And just and you have to set the URI to a um, service that could accept like a cloud event and forward that request to whatever offline explanation you want to create. So in this case, we also showcase that you could uh, use it with the uh, HTTP Kafka bridge. So it's not limited to like um, Kinetic. Uh, for sending the cloud event uh, for payroll logging. And now I will give it to Andrew to talk about um, machine learning explanation and why we need them uh, in the first case. Sure, thanks, Tommy. So the basic idea here is, um, let's see, all right, here we go. The basic idea here is that, you know, Tommy had mentioned we have this idea of trust in AI concept drift explanations from models. And so we want to go a little bit more in depth about what those actually look like, the problems, problems they address, uh, and how do we build up trusted AI and systems, and what is it that we're using that utilize these payload logs. Um, so specifically for this, the Linux Foundation AI uh, and Data Committee, they've come up with eight principles for trusted AI. And these eight principles are reproducibility, robustness, equitability, privacy, explainability, accountability, transparency, transparency, and security. And that's a lot. Um, we're only going to cover basically four of those here um, and the surrounding the four tools that IBM is working on. And IBM has contributed already to Linux Foundation AI, and now LFAI is working on uh, so let's take a look at those. So for that, uh, we have four, and the first one being around robustness. Uh, the question is, did anyone tamper with it? Uh, and if they did tamper with it, can we kind of see what happened uh, detecting this and making de defenses against it? Uh, the next one is for fairness. Um, can we ensure that our model behaves fairly uh, across people of different genders, different races, nationalities? Um, and just ensuring that our model doesn't get biased from different data points or uh, whatever the source may be. Uh, the third is explainability. Can we explain why our models made certain predictions? Um, and there's different levels of this, different uh, stakeholders for who we need to move these explana explanations for. And so what are they? How can we uh, appeal to a larger audience? And then the fourth is lineage. Um, are our models accountable? Can we go back and check uh, what has happened and how the model has came to its conclusion? Um, so these are the four major projects. Uh, there's three in um, 
already committed to LFAI and widely used, and that is around uh, robustness, fairness, and explainability. And we'll talk a little bit about the projects that surround those in a second and how we integrated those into KF serving and are utilizing the payload logging as well. Um, so the first one for robustness, just to set up the problem a little bit that people have, is that uh, models are great. And when you have them in standalone situations where an expert can come and look at the model predictions afterwards, that's great. But sometimes these models have to work in real-time solutions where an expert isn't readily available to check. And so an example of this is for self-driving cars. Uh, you have a car driving around a road and it needs to be able to recognize stoplights, stop signs, um, other cars, all types of things, pedestrians as well. And uh, for this real-time simulation, we need to be sure that there is no malicious actor messing with your uh, thing that could make you move and uh, you know maybe run a stop sign like we have in the left example where someone just put a few boxes of different colorings on top of a stop sign. And although you know the average person would look at that and not see an issue with it, they'd be able to recognize a stop sign, uh, your model may not be able to. And so how do we check for this and protect against this in production? And so that's the uh, robustness problem. And now to take a look at the explainability issue, um, we have a bunch of stakeholders and in order to get them to trust the model, they need to have an understanding of where it's making its decisions and what it is explicitly uh, in each example that is giving, informing its decision. So just to name some of the stakeholders that we have, um, for the first stakeholder of end user and customers, they need to know very simply without a very complex understanding of uh, AI and ML, uh, they need to know why they were recommended something. So for people who you know submitted a loan and got denied, what was it that made their loan denied? And uh, you know if, if somebody needs to look at that and figure out what it is, we need to know the data points that it compared for and all of those sort of things. Similarly, a doctor who's looking at a scan that has been sent to a model that uh, is recommending a, like, a certain treatment, they need to know what it was exactly that it was uh, recommending for so the doctor can go back and verify that. Uh, and then the second stakeholder, government regulators, um, you know, this is the question of, can you prove to me through your explanation that your model wasn't using some data point that it shouldn't be, such uh, you know, protected data points that shouldn't be utilized? Can we guarantee that those weren't used in uh, the prediction? And one of the ways you can do that is taking a look at the explanation and seeing what data points it considered. Uh, and the next is for developers. If it makes a wrong prediction, what is it that made the prediction wrong? And then once we know what it is, we can go find examples that we can train our model on and make it uh, much better. So debugability for developers. And so that's the, what we're looking for for explainability. And lastly, for fairness, the idea is, can we guarantee that our models are treating everyone fairly across different races, uh, genders, nationalities, um, we want to make sure that our models, even though they might be built up on biased data sets, and in some cases by uh, data sets that we don't even know are biased, how can we check for that uh, and, and how can we protect against that? Uh, so an example of this would be for the loans. Uh, if someone you know put in an application for a loan and they got denied, we want to make sure that in the past, uh, the data set that they had used for the models wasn't based off of very old records of who was accepted and who was denied loans because it may not be the case that they were checking and applying and approving and denying those fairly and they were considering things that they shouldn't be considering. And a more con concrete example of this is that uh, a algorithm that was used uh, in Broward County, Florida to assign a risk score to uh, people who had made an offense and were arrested and how likely they were to reoffend, And it was not 
a fair model at all, and it was not equitable to all races. And so after uh, a report came out that that was the case, they had to relook at their entire model and decide what was it that was causing this and how can we prevent this in the future. So that's the problem for fairness. Now let's look briefly at the toolkits um, that are available for these problems. The first one being for adversarial robustness, we have ART, the adversarial robustness toolbox. And so the idea is to provide the ability to quickly uh, get analysis of attacks, um, quickly create defenses, and uh, how can we make uh, a good detection method for if our model is trying, it is getting attacked by some adversary and attempting to cheat our model into mispredicting in some way. So that's art, and we'll see an example of all of these uh, in KF that we've implemented in KF Serving after at the end. So for explainability, we want to look at how can we explain our uh, predictions, and there's a few different ways to do this. Um, and we'll look at one specifically, um, but we can look at the data. We can look uh, and see, you know, based off of the data that we have in the past, what are some of the ideas um, based off of the predictions that they had made? What are some of the ideas in that in the data set that we can derive? And then also looking at the models, looking at a specific example and trying to get a complete explanation for that, but then also looking over a wide range of examples and getting an explanation uh, for those wide ranges and kind of comparing across the wide range of examples. So that's AIX360. And then the last one is AF360, um, all around fairness and um, making sure we have metrics to check for fairness, um, being able to have pre-processing items that we can remove uh, <clears throat> remove unfair data from data sets. Um, how can we make sure the training is fair? And then even if we have a biased model, how can we post-process it in a way that makes it so it doesn't have issues um, and have bias? So lastly, what we've done is we've move these trusted data projects into KF Serving and uh, integrating them into core KF Serving functionality so that you can just, with any model that you serve uh, using KF Serving, you can quickly and easily, as Tommy has shown, uh, add an explainer that will, say, get you metrics for how biased your data is, uh, get explanations for each individual prediction that it comes up with, or give you adversarial examples that are cheating your model uh, and making your model mispredict. Um, so that's what we've uh, enabled on, and then on top of payload logging is the attempt there for getting more complex systems and workflows so that we can look at metrics over very long periods of time um, and making sure we're getting the full comprehensive idea of what's going on there. So specifically here, some of the examples we have uh, first for AX360, we use a tool um, inside of Trusted AI Projects uh, AX360, which is locally interpretable model explainability or LIME. And the idea here um, for a concrete example is that you take a MNIST, uh, just any handwritten digit, and then you feed it to the explainer and it returns the same image, but with pixels highlighted as to what pixels Lime believes is the most indicative of the classification that it has given. So it gave a two classification here and the pixels that are highlighted in red are what uh, the Lime believes are the pixels that indicate a two very much over some of the other predictions that I might give, like a nine or an eight. And then for art, uh, we have integrated the square attack method, which is uh, putting a mask over the image to try and make your model mispredict. So this is an example of a mask that you might see um, placed on top of your MNIST image uh, in order to 
cheat your model into maybe mispredicting as a nine here or a, something similar. So that's what our art tool will do in chaos serving. And then lastly for F360 and the main reason that payload logging is needing, needed here is taking a look at bias and fairness metrics over long periods of time. So let's say you have let your model run in production for a very long period of time and you have all these examples and the data, uh, the predictions that the model is given, then we can take metrics um, off of those payload logs and make inferences based off of those metrics. So those are the three concrete examples of what we've implemented in KF serving so far. And uh, as well as that, Selden has their own explainers as well um, for Alibi. And they have lots of great tools that also work in a very similar way to the trusted AI tools and can give great uh, explanations and uh, calculate drift and uh, similar ideas there as well. So now I will pass it over to Tommy to uh, give a demo. Great. Thanks, Andrew. So we'll go to um, go over the demos right now. So uh, I will go with the demo flows on what we're going to uh, demonstrate here. So in this case, we will have a uh, KF serving model uh, with scikit-learn. And for this model, we will forward like, all the requests and response to a uh, creative uh, event brokers. And this event broker is configured with the Kafka cluster. So all the uh, requests and response are actually logged into a Kafka cluster. And behind the scenes, um, we will have a uh, Kafka um, connector to uh, sync those uh, Kafka events to a um, relational DB. Uh, in this case, we're using MySQL. And as M Andrew mentioned, uh, for AS360 to calculate the uh, fairness metric, we need a lot of data. So that's why we have to accumulate um, our uh, historical uh, prediction inside a relational DB and calculate it uh, periodically. And in this case, um, the AF360 bias detector will calculate uh, the new metrics for every hour and pull it from the latest um, database uh, in MySQL. And uh, once the uh, metric is being calculated, uh, it will store back into the persistent DB. And we also have like, a metrics transformer to actually uh, watch and update um, the latest metric to Prometheus. So we have a uh, visualizer UI. In this case, we're using Grafana to visualize what is the latest status um, of our uh, fairness metrics. And you can also see like the detailed demo flows on the next slides uh, we have downloaded from our website. Um, so now I'm going ahead and show you the actual um, demo flow. So in this case, uh, we already set up the uh, deployment for um, KNT eventing to uh, receive events. As you can see, um, we have the Kafka broker to sync all of our uh, request and response to Kafka. And we also have set up the uh, Kafka Connect to um, help us to sync all the uh, requests coming into the uh, Kafka cluster to our MySQL DB. So now uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our models. So we have a model called German credit. Um, this is a model to based on a set of features to calculate whether or not we approve a uh, credit card uh, to a particular user. And um, this model is based on um, scikit-learn and right now it's um, served at this endpoint. So now we want to like uh, create some predictions and get some feedbacks. Um, to do this, we'll use a uh, Python script to generate some uh, uh, dummy data and then send it to these models. And we will send 10 different kind of payloads. Um, so we have uh, uh, 10 new entries in this case.
So once the prediction came back, you should be able to see um, the result of the prediction. So um, you could see um, one is like um, disapproved and um, two is approved in this case. So uh, out of the nine um, requests we have done, only one of them have been approved. So now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, what the Kafka event is going to see. Um, so in, inside Kafka event, when a um, request comes in, it actually requests um, two events. One is the um, payload of the request and one of the response, which is the result of prediction. And uh, let's us to set up as a stream mode. So you kind of rerun the script again to have a new setup payload. You should be able to see um, a new, the request and report will be loaded as the Kafka in real time, as you can see in this case. And uh, from the BD perspective, um, you should also see like um, the prediction is synced to the, um, our database. So in this case, um, previously we have 76, so because we made like two different um, set of requests. So we should have like two requests and response. And now we have 86. So we want to like confirm uh, we have more data to come in because I'll uh, do another request. And once the prediction is here and being synced by the uh, Kafka connector, and you can see we have more data coming in, like 88. This is an extra request and response. And behind the scene, uh, periodically, um, we will have the IF360 um, Chrome job to actually uh, generate more metrics, as you can see over here. Um, every hour, we will generate a new set of metrics and uh, push it back to like uh, Prometheus so we can visualize it on Grafana. Uh, And you can see uh, we will have a Chrome job uh, running. And this is set as the like, pushing metrics um, periodically back to um, Prometheus. And once we have those uh, metrics, as you can see, let's uh, refresh the uh, Grafana dashboard. You will see that like, every hour there will be new metrics being generated. In this case, uh, we are looking at the metrics for uh, disparate impact, which is the uh, ratio between uh, privileged and unprivileged um, group. Um, so ideally, uh, in AI360, uh, when we calculate the disparate impact, the ideal um, value should be um, 0 0.8 to 1.2, because that's the ideal ratio between the two um, um, groups. However, in this case, we could see like um, most of the uh, disparate um, values uh, over time are like around 0 0.54, which is like darker in this case. So uh, for data sciences, you could see um, the distribution of the um, result is not very good. So um, they should actually try to fix it and try to make it look better. And to and in addition to just looking at one uh, value, you can also set up um, the dashboard to pull more different values from um, Prometheus. Um, for example, you want to look at just the base rate on um, uh, what are the balance between um, passing the um, the credit for a particular person. We could just uh, create this base rate check and then apply it. And usually it takes um, a few seconds to load the data. Um, or we could actually create a new dashboard to display this data. Um, it will actually kind of bug out. So when I want to take a look at the base rate, we could actually create this. Then we could able to see like what are the base rate. Um, so because uh, 
uh, our sample data actually have a um, more high ratio to not passing um, the uh, credit for a particular person. So you can see over time, we actually like um, the base rate actually drop because um, our sample data is actually a little bit more biased now. So based on this information, um, so the data scientists that are like have more useful information to like know what, uh, why they need to like fix the models and how they could uh, fix it based on the metric provided by the AIF, AIF um, 360 fairness tool. And that is the end of the demos. Um, thank you very much uh, for joining. And if you have any question, we'll be on Slack and um, we'll be answering questions right after this. Thank you very much.